Hey everybody, it's Brad from Stockbridge. It's June 30th. Let's do a quick garden update. The first thing I'd like to show you are the tomato plants. These are determinate cherry tomatoes. I planted them in buckets. I realize they look terrible right now, but uh, earlier they were completely loaded with tomatoes. I probably picked over them five or six times, gotten over a grocery bag of tomatoes off each one of these plants. Uh, the plants stayed small. Uh, when they were loaded with tomatoes, they would actually, uh, the little limbs here would break. If they were held even by a thread, I'd leave them on there and they'd still produce tomatoes. The size of these plants uh, and the production was really incredible. Uh, as you can see on these, I didn't use any kind of cages or staking. Uh, I think I will next year. These would do really well. They take up a very small amount of space and just one of those cheap, small $3 wire cages would be perfectly adequate for these tomatoes. If you've got a small space, uh, the thing that I really like about these little cherry tomatoes is when you bite into them, when you leave them on the vine until they're almost overripe, and then you bite into them, they taste more like a grape than a tomato. You don't get that acidic flavor, but you get this burst of just sugary sweetness from these uh, little cherry tomatoes. Okay, the next thing I want to show you are these full-sized uh, tomatoes. These are still determinate variety tomatoes. You can see that the plants are about two feet tall, but the tomatoes are full-sized. These are bush early girl and bush steaks, which I guess is a, a variety of beef steak. I, I did stick a little bit of this uh, empty conduit in the buckets and tie them up simply because of the weight of these tomatoes, the plants are falling over. Again, if I had used the little small, inexpensive tomato cages, they would have been adequate. I've picked over these three or four times. You can, you're can you probably looking at this video going, why is this guy showing us a video of these horrid looking plants? Well, it's going into July. The weather has been in the 90s. Today it's supposed to be 103. That's way more than tomato plants can take. But I just wanted to show you that even after all of that extreme weather, uh, the plants are still somewhat alive and producing. If you're a patio gardener or a bucket gardener, um, next year I think I may only grow determinate variety tomatoes. There's so much less hassle and I've been getting about the same production out of these as I'm getting out of the trellised uh, tomato plants. Here are the trellised plants, full size. I made the little trellises like the directions in square foot gardening. I used half inch EMT conduit for the frame and then I used the wire netting. I picked over these plants really heavily in the last week or so. So these are the tomatoes that were remaining on them. These big guys hiding under here, I've got some brandy wines. Uh, these are beef steaks. Uh, I'd like to thank Bobby at uh, MHP Gardening. He likes those Rutgers tomatoes and tomato sandwiches. Uh, these are not Rutgers, but man, a BLT in the morning with these right off the vine, it'll change your life. One other nice thing of following Bobby's lead is he talks about uh, widow ladies that uh, are in a trailer park close to him and, and sharing his produce with them. Uh, I found a, a couple of elderly ladies that rent houses close to here. Also, Allison at Meet My People's Ministry, and my next door neighbor works at the food pantry at the Catholic Church. It's so nice to have these extra plants with all of this stuff and you can come out and you can pick just basket after basket of it and it's a really good feeling to be able to just give that away. The Swiss chard and the kale are still hanging on. Technically this heat should have already killed them. It's like the plants have quit growing but they appear to be healthy and stocky and they're just kind of sitting there waiting for the weather to break so we'll see if they make it through the rest of the year. These are my bush beans. I didn't plant them in self-watering buckets. I just drilled some holes in the bottom of regular buckets and put the beans in. In the early spring, they didn't want to germinate. I had a lot of trouble with them after it warmed up a little bit. The beans came on up. These things are funny. They'll look really good, and then you'll look out the window and you think, oh no, my beans are dying. And you come out and look at them, and they'll be just covered with beans. Then you pick them, and a lot of times the plants will come back and give you a second or even a third crop. Remember my cucumbers? <laughs> so do I. This is all that's left of my cucumbers right now. Empty buckets. 
the cucumber plant's got a really bad case of powdery mildew. Frankly, so did most of my yellow squash and my zucchini. What I've done is I've taken a gallon of water, I put in a tablespoon of baking soda, a tablespoon of dishwashing liquid, I've shaken that up. On the squash that I have left and on the cucumbers that I have left, I've just been spraying that on as a foliar spray. I'm trying it, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I'd love for some of you guys who are experienced gardeners, if you've got a really good remedy for powdery mildew on the cucumbers and the squash plants, not something that you've seen or read about or heard about, but something that you've actually used and it's worked for you, please post it in the comments section at the bottom of this video. I'd love to hear about it, and I know the folks that watch my videos would love to hear about it as well. Now this right here is ugly. This is a little zucchini plant. My poor little zucchinis, the ones that the powdery mildew didn't get, I think the little cucumber beetles or squash beetles did. These are plants that I caught the mildew on and I sprayed with the, the baking soda and soap solution that I talked about. And as you can see, these three plants seem to be doing a lot better. They've got some squash on there that I think is gonna make it to the supper table. This is a cucumber plant that I reseeded and you can see the powdery mildew that I'm talking about on this leaf. The plant otherwise when you look at that thing, the color uh, of the leaves, the deep green, I find myself asking, gee Brad, how much fertilizer did you put in that bucket? Well look what I found. Here's a little softball sized watermelon that's growing. I don't know whether these plants are going to make it. Watermelon plants and cantaloupe plants are pretty big and planting them in buckets. These aren't self-watering buckets, so I just don't know if I'm going to be able to keep them wet enough. What I did find interesting was I set them out here. The watermelon plants grew towards the sun. They grew south. The cantaloupe plants grew away from the sun. They grew north. Sometimes stuff just doesn't work at all. Or it comes up and it gets eaten by bugs or animals or something. It's real easy to get frustrated, but don't give up because you also get garden surprises. Like I said, it's been in the 90s, even the hundreds here in Atlanta. This was a collard that I just didn't get a chance to pull out. And it's sitting here. It is ready to have collard greens. This plant is beautiful. There's no way that plant should even be alive. So you get a few surprises in the garden. When my garden starts doing really terribly, I try to concentrate on the stuff that will actually grow. Here is okra in five gallon buckets. These plants get absolutely huge. There's no way they should survive in five gallon buckets. But what, at this time of year, the stuff that's suffering from heat and just not growing, I yank it out and I plant okra. And I gotta say, if you'll take a, a piece of tin foil and cut your okra up, and then go get some of those little cherry tomatoes, cut them in half, put them in with a little salt and pepper and butter, and throw them on your grill, you can even put some green beans in there with them. Grill them for about 15 minutes next time you're doing your hamburgers or steaks. And then just open up the foil pouch and they're ready to serve. They're not slimy. It's a, it's a really good garden vegetable. I really like my okra. Here's another one of my garden surprises. This is fennel. What's fennel? I don't know. I planted it and it didn't come up. I planted other stuff. It came up. I harvested it, I pulled it out, and then all of a sudden I looked out here and this fennel was growing. The only reason I planted it was the back to Eden video. There's this lady that keeps interrupting Paul and she's going, oh, this fennel, it's all good. With her reaction to fennel, I just had to grow some. It might end up being terrible, but I wanted to give it a whirl. Try different stuff in your garden. You might be surprised what you like and what you don't like. These peppers are pretty amazing. The ones in self-watering buckets will grow pretty large. They'll set a lot of fruit, and when you go to refill the buckets, it just seems like they don't use any water. I don't see how they do it. As I'm looking at them this morning, though, I do have a couple of them that the leaves are a little wilted and they seem like this heat is beginning to get to them. Jalapeno peppers are quickly becoming one of my garden favorites. I take them, slice them in half, scrape all of the seeds out with a spoon, stuff them with a little piece of seasoned chicken breast, wrap them with a piece of bacon, poke a toothpick through them, and grill them. That is fantastic. 
jalapeno chicken poppers. Very easy to grow, very quick to make, very good to eat. Here's something that kind of amazes me. You'll have a plant that's just diseased, bug-eaten, suffering, wilted, and so you pull it out and you throw it in your compost pile. And then you come back a few weeks later and that dead plant, instead of breaking down and composting, has somehow taken root and it's thriving. This was a little piece of Swiss chard from a bucket that I had dumped out. It's hiding under a volunteer tomatilla plant and it looks great. Just down from it, there's some broccoli, some kale, other plants that shouldn't even be growing this time of year that were discarded that when they hit the compost pile, they decided to take root and come back for a second life. Well, that's about it for my Stockbridge garden for today. It's not much to look at, but there's lots of good eating going on out here. Show us pictures of your garden. We understand this time of year it's hot, your plants look terrible, but show us what you're getting out of it. What do you do when it gets hot? What do you do to handle the bugs? What do you do when something that you really thought was going to grow dies? And then show us your surprises, the things that should not be growing this time of year that are. Take care.